So this just came in the mail today. I didn't bother showing the opening on video. I bought it on eBay from a guy who said he was selling it at uh, for a friend that was 80 some years old. I take his name was uh, a P and an H maybe because that appears here and it appears on the bottom of the case. That is, was owned at one time by somebody that says it. I have one of these. I'm touching it right now. Only it's marked an NIDA model 444. This one's marked JDR DFG 600. Same font, everything. There's even a green sticker on the other one, same as this. It's exactly the same. Uh, I bought it, I've not powered this one up, but I bought the other one like 20 years ago. I powered it up when I bought it, it worked. I've never used it since. Uh, I do see it's for, it says 50 ohms. So does the other one. This is the seller, and it's a one-time deal only, so. But I just wanted to show you, you could get an analog, a fully analog function generator for under $40. You can see it was $22.80 plus $14. The gentleman shipped it on a Monday, and today's Wednesday I received it. Where is it from? Winchester, Massachusetts. Okay, so I already have one of these. Why did I buy another one? Well, that's to be explained. I don't know why I bought another one. When I decided to use one of these, I made a decision before I bought this, I decided I wanted to calibrate it. Well, these are not just JDR or NIDA or uh, see what else do I have sitting on the bench here uh, B and K uh, GW Institech it's virtually impossible to find calibration instructions schematics the whole ball of wax but while I was searching on Google for that information the very first hit I got was from a guy who had what I believe to be the same thing and then uh, an NIDA model 444 and the video said here's how you calibrate it I watched most of the video so this is the gentleman who's made the video I watched I don't think he'll mind me showing his name because his channel name is Charles Smith without the L. I did delete his address. So this is reported to be a set of instructions for calibration. Now he sells this for around, with shipping and everything, right around $15, which is an, an extremely good price. Okay, here we have all kinds of Okay. I'm not sure why he must have changed names. I don't understand this. A lot of tube conversions. And I believe that Mr. Smith wrote this manual.
here are the uh, controls. I think these are all potentiometers, but I'm not sure. Instructions for calibration. Parts list. And then he claims to have reverse engineered the whole thing. And look at the quality of the drawings. Uh, he's got waveforms. Uh, he's got the functioning of all the pots. At least most of them. So what do we have? <laughs> we have a board layout. Apparently there's things connected to headers that plug in, I guess, yes, PPs all over here, plugs. This is great. Component views. A X-ray view of the board, colored, here's one looking through, it's the, real, it's the same thing but it's, none of the traces are identified, here he identifies some of the traces. Uh, blue is negative potential because it's a bipolar supply. And red, I guess the red's positive traces. I'm not sure about that. That would be like uh, this red and these blue. Just the board itself. x-rayed through the board and the bottom view of the board. Now, I don't think I could get this printed at a printing house for ten dollars. I'll take one of these, I'll take them both apart and calibrate them. This is a hell of a deal. Now this is an interesting thing. The, the case is split on the center line into a top and a bottom. And they are held on by two screws on the top and two screws on the bottom. And the side of the case has a boss in it, top and bottom. And this fits over the boss. The case is not fastened in front, so we have to take these folding handles off. Pushing in allows you to rotate them. With a real small tool, you find a hole. Okay. Take that off and remove that screw. Now, in order to keep from losing the screw, I'm just put the I'm just going to put the uh, button back on. We'll do the same thing again. Now that the handle's off, we can take the case apart. Start with the top. Remove the two back screws. It's a little bit tight, but a little persuasion will get it right off.
fairly nice rigid plastic. There's no bend to it. Now you see this is the I've taken the top off and this is the bottom of the circuit board. Actually the circuit board it's hanging mounted downward. So remove the other two screws in the bottom and take it off. And these are all machine screws, there's no self-tapping screws. I think the top and bottom is identical. These little metal tabs are screwed to the bottom, but the, if you look at the top, it would accept the same thing. And then there's four holes in the bottom drilled for feet. Anyway, at this point, we don't need to go any further. Any farther, we have some holes here. And these holes, two here, here, that would make these two these, and these two back here these. It's possible that little design changes were made. For example, this board may have been shortened up, and over here it could have been cut off. We take these screws out. We should get under the metal plate. This wire's not long enough. This uh, push on fitting is sort of not right. But it looks like it was. It looks like that's been cockeyed since it left the factory. still a little short. I guess I better power this up. There's a date code on the back here. I would assume that's uh, 10 of 92. So this is exactly 20 years old. It did come with a rainbow colored and translucent IEC connector. LED lit up and no smoke comes out of it. Well I've completed the calibration uh, following the instructions. I would say that these drawings are set up for the machine to be rotated so that the knobs are on this side rather than here then everything reads correctly. I'm not sure what these two pots do. I'm going to look at the schematic and see what SFR3 and SFR4 are just set in the middle. All the rest of this works. So if you own one of these, what are they?
Now this is this is a uh, the DFG 600, I believe. Let me check again. Yes. And and this seems to follow exactly what I can find in here. I'm going to take the uh, NIDA 444 apart and uh, I'll perform the same kind of calibration on it. But these drawings are very well done. Uh, I just can't find fault with them. So this is 20 years old. It functions just fine. The sine wave and the triangle wave and they're very sharp and clear. It has a sweep setting which is a good thing to have. Uh, in addition to being able to get a DC offset it has a sweep rate and width sweeps turned on by this switch. So I can adjust the width and the rate at which it sweeps. And the output is good to 2 megahertz. And I guess it goes down to point zero two hertz on this band. Here's the second one. You see it's an NIDA 444. You can't tell them apart. They look exactly the same. This was owned by somebody official. This is one year newer than the one we just did. And it was last calibrated in 94. So it was calibrated probably when they got it. So I've completed the calibration of the uh, NIDA model 444. Again, straight by this uh, instruction, no problems. I did not take the bottom off of this. Both calibrations, I think the only significant thing I did was uh, adjust the output voltage. It's supposed to be 30 volts peak to peak, and both were about 25. Now I'm using peak to peak on my oscilloscope. Uh, maybe they set them with a meter or something. Oh, and I touched up the frequency on both of them. If you have any interest in these instruments, now I I have this one and this JDR. I don't know that I personally don't know if the, these two instruments the ProTech and the Hung Chang are the same, but um, the ProTech and the NIDA are, even to the fact that both of them have the same uh, markings stenciled on the chassis. I would say if you have either one of these, or probably all four of them, this is well worth contacting Mr. Uh, Charles Smith. And you get a hold of him by looking his, his YouTube channel up.